going to be our house, uh, it was time to downsize and we thought this would be the place to do it until we found out how haunted the house was. So we go upstairs and we walk into that side room and my wife's sitting there and she, as soon as I walk in the room, she goes, if you think I am moving into this house, you are out of your mind. I think every single paranormal investigator can count on one hand the really amazing experiences that they've ever had. And lo and behold, when we're down in the basement, which is the area where this dark figure is, where the owner of the building said repeatedly, something evil is down there. And you have an experience where not only is something saying it's gonna fuck you up. I heard fuck you. Not only is it saying fuck you and die. That was, that sounded like another fuck you. Yeah. So, that sounds like die. But it also calls you out by your first and last name. I, Never in my life have ever gotten both my first and my last name said as clearly as I did through that damn box. So I used the cat balls again because they're easy to manipulate and that's what she was messing with already. So I put it back over in the closet. I was asking simple yes or no questions and I was getting lightning quick answers. Sometimes before I could even finish what I was saying. Hazel, can you please stop playing that for just a second? Thank you, Hazel. All right, Hazel, before we start stomping, go ahead and turn it back on now. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Third floor? What about the third die. floor? Die. Again. What do you want to die in the third floor? Bitch. Bitch. You are safe. Here. You're safe or are you right talking? here. Right here. My name is Scott McCafferty and I'm a mental health professional by day and a paranormal investigator by night. Over the past 11 years, I've been learning to take the skill set of helping others and apply it to my ongoing investigations into the paranormal. With an assortment of friends and family, I am on a mission to contact the echoes of history and potentially solve the mysteries they left behind. <clears throat> My name is Scott McCafferty. I have been a paranormal investigator for close to 20 years now. Yeah, close to 20 years now. And no matter how many times I say it, it still makes me feel old as hell. Hi guys, I'm Rex Tracy. You might remember me from the previous video. I've been a ghost hunter for well over a decade now. I've always been interested in the paranormal. So anytime we come to a paranormal investigation, there's three goals that we set out to do. Number one, we want to try to, to verify if there's something actually here at the location. Number two, we want to verify what or who is it that's actually at this location. And the third reason is, why are they here? So to start with the Broadwell Funeral Home, we need to break down the history and the hauntings going floor by floor, starting with the second floor. On the second floor, there have been three confirmed hauntings that occur up here. The first and foremost is that of Woodrow Walden. He was the third owner of the property who passed away in the back bedroom in the early 1990s. The second confirmed spirit up here is that of Rosalie. Rosalie was the daughter of Christopher Broadwell. Everybody thinks that Rosalie was either mentally or physically handicapped. And back in those days, if you had a child that was mentally or physically handicapped, it was a, an embarrassment to the, to the family and they would hide them away. They apparently must have hit her in the attic. There was actually a psychic rendition drawn of her down on the first floor. So you can really get a good idea of what she would have looked like, though we're not 100% sure that's what her actual look would have been. Other paranormal investigators claim to have been getting a voice by the name of another little girl who calls herself Hazel, who has also been up on the second floor and is believed to be Rosalie's friend. She's been seen hanging out in the bedroom in the middle and also the bathroom across the hall, and there's no historical record as to who Hazel was. 
Our next stop is the first floor. So the first floor probably has the least amount of activity of everywhere else in the building. The hot spot here is this rocking chair. So from the stories you hear about the rocking chair, this chair will supposedly move and rock on its own when there's nobody sitting in it. The spirits in this, in this building also for some reason don't like this rocking chair being in the living room and oftentimes will try to move it or into another room somewhere else in the building. And last but not least, we come to the basement. The basement is by far the creepiest place in the building and that's because it looks like a deep dank basement and you could very easily believe that this is where they used to embalm the bodies that were used for the funeral parlor upstairs. If you've ever heard of Mike Ring, the creepy Cincinnati paraphernalia, he comes up here quite a bit. We first bought this. I, I did not believe in paranormal. And Mike taught me otherwise. Well, we're all ready to start. We're going to go to the basement. You, who wants to go to the basement? I thought, no, I'll go to the basement. The Lord, I'm not afraid of the basement. Oh, I should have kept my mouth shut because I went down there and we're back in the back where the embalming room was. All of a sudden, it sounded like somebody took an empty five gallon bucket like that and just threw it across the floor. Mike looks at me and he says, what was that? And I said, hell, you're the ghost hunter. You tell me what it was. <laughs> so they go, him and another guy go down there to, to check it out. Well, right there is where the door that goes into that, the old hole bin, and that door was open. They got about two feet from that door, and I mean, that thing slammed shut. Just scared the crap out of me. So we go upstairs and we walk into that side room and my wife's sitting there and she, as soon as I walk in the room, she goes, if you think I am moving into this house, you are out of your mind. <laughs> and that was the end of her association with this house. I've had a lot of people tell me that there's a very bad spirit that lives in the basement. Um, there was a psychic here one night and this guy was good. I mean, he told me the history of this house. The one guy that was, he was the one that was the psychic when we went to the basement, and he walked over to the side to that side room, and the door was closed, and he went to open the door, and he, he said, "No, I'm not going to do that." He said, "There's a very evil spirit in there, and I'm not going to." Uh, I've had a lot of people tell me that the the evil spirit down that lives down there, he calls himself one or the one. All right, so we are live right here. Well, not really live. You're watching some tape delay. But we are at the Broadwell Funeral Parlor in Felicity, Ohio. Uh, joining me are my partners in crime. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, partners in crime. I'm Andrew. I'm Rex. So tonight, we are taking on a location that was built in 1910. We have three static cameras going up around the building. On the first floor here, we are watching this rocking chair, which the rocking chair has been known to move and shake on its own. The spirit of an old lady has been seen sitting in it before. On the second floor, we've got a camera shooting down the entire length of the hallway. Uh, two of the three bedrooms up there is where the young girl spirit, uh, Rosalie, has been seen. And then our last static camera is in the basement, shooting down the hallway where they used to embalm the bodies uh, when this was the active funeral parlor. Um, and supposedly some dark spirits have been seen down there. They've kicked over buckets, they've thrown things, they've knocked people on the floor. Uh, so we are optimistic that Rex here is gonna go ahead and get the shit kicked out of him down in the basement. Thanks for volunteering, Rex. So the time right now is uh, 8.36 p.m. and we are on our first patrol of the night. We're gonna head up to the second floor and see if we can go ahead and contact Rosalie. All right, let's roll. All right, so I brought uh, an EVP recorder. Uh, let's do an EVP session, burst session real quick. And let's see if we get anything. And then uh, if you guys see a glare in the background, just so you know, that's where the other static camera is right there. That's why you're, that's the IR light you're seeing. Okay, everybody stop moving, get comfortable. All right, EVP burst session number one. Okay, burst session number one, second floor of the Broadwell Funeral Parlor. Uh, Rosalie, are you up here by chance? Is Andrew whispering? All right, playing back. Okay, first session number one, second floor of the Broadwell Funeral Parlor. Uh, Rosalie, are you up here by chance? Okay, first session number one, second floor of the Broadwell Funeral Parlor. Uh, Rosalie, are you up here by chance? Okay, nothing so far. Oh, my fat butt now. Don't laugh at me too much or call myself fat. All right, ready? All right, Rosalie, this will be the last last time I'm gonna ro roll on this for now, and then we're gonna try something else, okay? Can you confirm that anyone ever hurt you in some way? Okay, playing back. All right, Rosalie, this will be the last, last time I'm gonna roll on this for now, and then we're gonna try something else. 
Can you hear that? That was somebody talking over you. Yeah. All right, Rosalind, oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. that, that wasn't either that of wasn't us. That, that, that wasn't was, that was any of us. That was something like right on the mic. Yeah, that was. A... So I want you to listen to this again. Listen to this. Listen to this voice. All right, Rosalie, this will be the last last. All right, Rosalie, this will be the last last. Here's a few things I want you to know about this particular voice. Number one, it sounds like someone clearing their throats. I don't know. To me, it sounds like there could be some words in there. But the interesting piece to that is notice how none of us in this room react to this. All right, Rosalie, this will be the last last time I'm going to ro roll on this for now, and then we're going to try something else, okay? So none of us respond to this thing or react to it whatsoever. We caught it on our voice recorder. We caught it on our handheld camera. And we also caught it on the static camera at the end of the hall. interesting part about this is it sounded closer to the static camera at the end of the hall. Why this is significant is right below that camera in the downstairs living room area, we have another static camera that's filming the rocking chair. Sound in this building carries very, very, very easily. It is very easy for me to talk very loudly on the first floor and be able to pick it up on the second floor. Yet that camera down there on the first floor did not catch this voice. That's significant because that also rules out possibly being somebody outside. If somebody were outside the building, that camera on the first floor is right near a doorway and a window, the same as the camera on the second floor. So if the camera on the second floor is gonna pick up a voice from outside, then that camera on the first floor should pick up that same exact voice. Uh, unless like you, like I don't think you bumped no, that's it. Not no, bump. no, that's no. No, because I, I had, yeah. I was on, the camera was focused on this thing. You yeah, can see there's nothing like, there. Unless they, that happened, I don't think that's any, well, no, it's any of us that made that sound. Clear words. Words. Yeah. Oh, no, that sounds like, get it's over. Like, that's fast. Who are you? Uh, that's, it's not like, who are you? It's like a, wh where, what? You want me to give the side room a shot? Yeah. After you. This room is cooler. This. So this, I think, used to actually be her bedroom. Yeah. Um, how much seven cat balls? Put them in the. Here we go. Put them in the closet. Cat balls are a pretty simple tool. You can pick them up anywhere. You just press the button on top. It'll light up, and then you would set it down, and it would stop. Now, the reason they're such a good tool to use is they're very easy to interact with similar to like dominoes or anything that's easy to manipulate. But with those, they light up, so they give you visual feedback. So anything interacts with it, it'll go off. So a ghost lights it up by simply using its energy to manipulate the ball. A simple touch, or even just giving it a push. They can interact with it in numerous ways. You can ask yes or no questions like light it up if you're here, make it go off, and during the investigation, there were actually times we asked it to stop, and it would stop before we could even finish saying the sentence. All right, can you make it stop, please? Thank you. All right, can you light it up now? Would you like if I stepped out of the room? Stop where you were again. Yeah. yeah so right okay. here, this board. Oops. So that might have been you that started off then. Yeah. Can you turn it off, please? Do you like the lights that's making? Hazel, are you playing with that? Hazel, can you please stop playing that for just a second? Thank you, Hazel. All right, Hazel, before we start stomping, go ahead and turn it back on now. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. It's nice to meet you. My name's Scott. This is Rex, and Andrew's out in the hallway. Hi. Uh, can you make that stop if it's okay for Andrew to come in here? Andrew, come on in. She stopped it. That was like on. Key. And now it's going again. Yeah, come on in. All right, Hazel, if it's you, can you make that stop, please? Yeah, you can turn the light off. It's fine. Hazel, it is you. Can you make it light up if you want us to leave? It's lit up. All right. Hold on, real quick. 
Let me ask you one more question, okay? Can you turn it off so I can ask you one more and then we'll leave? I promise. Okay. Do you do you want all of us to leave? All right, I'm gonna stomp. So it, we know it still works, so it's not like the batteries are dead. Yeah. Okay. So All right, we promised we'd go downstairs. Alrighty, Hazel, have fun. We'll be back up in a little bit, okay? Nice to meet you. And whoever the gentleman was up here, nice to meet you as well. Do right, you guys wanna go first since I'm filming? Yeah. Here, I never thought you'd ask. <laughs> Alrighty, we're coming down to the basement. I think of I think of the three floors, I was probably the most excited to go down to the basement because that's where the supposedly evil entity likes to hang out. The basement is a friggin' nightmare. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of noise pollution down here simply oh, because of the basement. Be using the spirit box. Hopefully that'll come through good. So we decided to start off our time down in the basement with doing a spirit box session. The reason we started with this is because we have the furnace down here that's making all sorts of noise because it's gotta heat this entire gigantic building. All right, so. I'm looking for a Mr. Carl. I told you like to hang out down here. Carl, can you please let us know if you're here? All right, Carl, if you're down here with us, I'm gonna uh, do the same challenge the other guy did that you scared the crap out of that went running out of here. I want to prove this place is haunted. Prove it to me. I didn't open up as far as I Marco! All right, we're on FM now. That was a woman's voice? Yeah. Sounded like it helped me. There it is again. Ma'am, can you say that again, please? Save me. Save me? Yeah, I'm here. Help me save me. Where help. are you so we can come help you? Down here. Down here, so yeah. Where are you at down here? Can you knock and tell us where you're at? Help me. Save me. Now we're getting tons of voices. Help. Please help. That yeah. was a young girl. All right, you've got to tell me where you're at so I can come help you. Are you trapped somewhere? It's getting like nails with it's getting cold, yeah. Like over in front of me right now? Yes. Like, I feel it over here. Hello? Man's voice said hello. Hello? Alright, where... What is this? Where are you at that we need to come help you? Four? The floor? Four? Four? Help me. Please help. Please. Help. Oh. Holy shit. And they're all different voices now. Yeah. Why do you need help? What's going on? There are, there are more than one voice. Yeah, there's yeah. multiple voices. And then there's that female voice as soon as we started it. Are you in that room down there with the oil tankers? I would definitely say the floor that was most active for voices would have been the basement. Now, a lot of that seemed residual to me whereas the second floor was much more interactive. So what I thought was making it more residual was the repeating. It just kept repeating like on a loop. Like if you had an old tape player and you just had a small tape, the help me, save me, help me, save me. So to me that made it seem residual because a lot of times when you're interacting with something, eventually you'll get an answer or you'll just get a lack thereof. Down there it was just repeating itself. Help me, save me. And we just kept asking, you know, what do you need from us, what can we do? Help me, save me, help me, save me. The difference between an intelligent and a residual haunting is an intelligent haunting or an intelligent spirit can interact with you, they can answer questions. It's something that's very aware that you're there and can interact with you. A residual haunting, think of it kind of like a tape recorder. It's an imprint or something that gets captured in the environment that every so often will just replay itself like a tape recorder. It can't interact with you. It has no clue if you're there. It'll go off whether you're there or not. And it just reenacts whatever that moment was that got captured in the environment. Now it's quiet. Let's go back down. Hazel. Hazel? Just said Hazel. Woman's voice. Hazel. 
Who's in here? Please help again. Help. It's just help, non-stop. Help, help me, help us. Now, I will give, there was something else down there that seemed much more intelligent or had the capacity to interact that was down there. Do you need help with the man who's over in the corner? No the corner? What? I thought I said no. You heard the corner? I heard the corner? Which corner? The one out in the main area by the coffin. That one. That, that one. one? Yeah. Please help. Are you trying to get out of here? I heard a fuck you. I heard a get out? No, I heard a fuck you. No, I heard a fuck okay. you. Okay. But, get out of here? Get out of here? That one, unlike the rest of them, how they sounded really like distant, that one was close. I'm sorry, but the saying fuck you is not going to scare me. you got to do better than that. Here. Here. Are you in this room with us? That was something. Yep. That was a foreboding voice. Yeah. You're not telling us what to do to help you. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to tell you what you need. You know what? I have an idea. Yes. Let's take that over into that corner. Yeah. Okay. Is there a bucket kicked over? Make sure you close this again so you're not blocking it. Yep. Get it? No, it's a look at the door. Okay, which door? That one or the staircase? Holy shit. I thought I saw somebody moving by the staircase. Watch your step, watch your step. I swear to God, I looked like somebody was standing right here. I thought, like, when we first went over there, that's what I thought. But, like, he said I am. He just said I am. There was a point where me and Scott had both seen it over by the steps. Now, neither of us had communicated that directly, but around the same time, we finally brought it up. And as soon as we went over there, we got on Spirit Box, it acknowledging that we were coming over to look at it. If you're standing right here. If you're standing right here, tell us your name. Help me. When I came down the steps, I looked at that door. Were you trying to get me to look at the oil door? It's not like yes to me. Yeah. Why did you want me to look at the oil door? Who did I see standing over here? I saw a head and shoulders. I was just saying, it sounded like it said to him. Here, stop. Real quick, go stand over in that corner where we were, and I'm going to stand here. And then don't say anything, and we're going to switch spots because I want to check something. Okay. It said we're having fun. Did I do that? Here, Scott, I'm going to come switch spots. Real quick. Okay. So, I think he's trying to see if roughly the size. I was facing the other way, so I didn't see anything. So whatever it is, or whoever it is that I think I saw, and it's very possible that I could have played tricks on me, but whatever it was, for sure it was right. So what I thought I was seeing was I thought I was seeing this, but I had seen something like right where you were, but it was probably like this tall. So I saw it here and it was roughly that same height. It was like this, and I could see the head and the yeah. shoulders. Like so whatever, whoever it was, was short. Yeah, Scott was literally just standing over before he even said anything. That you saw, we get shorter. Yeah, I, I'm about five ten. No mm -hmm. more than five ten. So what I, whoever I saw, whatever I saw, was probably about five seven, five eight. But it looked like it was round. So I don't yeah. know. I saw. I don't know if it was a shadow. It like just, a head. Yeah, it looked like a head. You see so, so who did we just see? Why don't you come introduce yourself to us? Did you did? I don't remember you coming up introducing yourself. 
Did, can you hear me? I can hear you now. You gotta speak a little louder. That was. That sounded like another fuck you. Yeah. So. That one sounds like die. Right. Did I just say a guy? I have a really hard time trying to explain how I feel about what happened down in that basement. I've investigated for many years, making myself feel old again. I think every single paranormal investigator can count on one hand the really amazing experiences that they've ever had. And lo and behold, when we're down in the basement, which is the area where this dark figure is, where the owner of the building said repeatedly something evil is down there and you have an experience where not only is something saying it's gonna fuck you up get out of here not only is it saying fuck you and die that was that sounded like another fuck you yeah. that so, sounds like die but it also calls you out by your first and last name right that is the first time in my career, in my life, that I've ever done investigating where I've had a spirit box. And keep in mind, a spirit box is an AM FM radio. All it does is sweep up and down the AM FM bandwidth really fast, making a whole bunch of noise. So it should sound like a bunch of gibberish. Never in my life have I ever gotten both my first and my last name said as clearly as I did through that damn box. That is absolutely disturbingly amazing is the best way I can phrase it. And the thing is, is like I live stream all of our evidence review. I live stream it to my Twitch page. And one of the things that always happens whenever I get a recording of something saying fuck you is I get excited. I start jumping up and down. I'm like, yeah, we got it. And chat, the chat, the people who watch this thing always think it's the most hilarious thing in the damn world. And they always say, Scott, you are the only person we've ever met or ever seen who gets excited when someone says fuck you. And I'm also excited that this thing said my first and last name. And I'm also excited it said fuck you up. And you want to know why? Here's a dirty little secret. My entire life I've been told ghosts aren't real. My entire life I've been told that I'm crazy. My own mother has used the phrase warped when talking about me and my interest in both the paranormal and anything related to horror. And now here I am in a location. I get the word fuck twice, which is not something you hear on, on actual radio. They're not allowed to say it. Not only did I get full sentences talking over essentially dozens of radio stations, but I also got my first and last name. That confirms to me that there is something in that building. It's intelligence and it's reacting. And to me, that's pretty damn exciting. Time is... What time is it? Don't trip and die. Trip, trip and die in your time. This is my time. 10.42. It is 10.42 p.m. We are on our second patrol of the night. We are going to walk around with a spirit box, uh, a different spirit box, uh, and we are going to play some Marco Polo. One of my absolute favorite techniques to do on a ghost hunt is play Marco Polo. Here's how you do it. You take a spirit box. You take the boot tube or a portal or a geoport or something of that nature, and you walk around the building and you just say, Marco! Amazingly enough, every place I've ever tried this, something always likes to play Marco Polo with me. Marco. That's just it. Yeah. So to help us with our game of Marco Polo, we're gonna try a new device called the ANC device. This was something that was developed by paranormal inventor Gary Golka. He has been featured on Ghost Adventures. He helped create the Melmeter. He is a widely known name in the paranormal field for developing some of the best instruments that we use as far as paranormal investigating goes. When you use a spirit box, you get all this, all this noise. An ANC Mini is designed to try to remove as much of the static out of that noise as possible and leave behind only the bits of sound that you need to be able to tell if something's actually communicating with you. Which room are you in? All of them. All of them? I heard that too. All right, so should we split up and each go into a different room? Yeah. yeah. Go back. Go back? Go back. To the steps? Uh, go back where? All right, I'll take the room on the left. That's this room. All right, turn this on, I just hit the button. Yep. You take the room on the right because that one's got a camera. Rex, you take this one. 
Okay. So you're on camera, you're yep. on camera, and I can do the little. Gotcha. <clears throat> Find a nice corner to sit in. Who's here with me in this room? Hazel, are you in here still? Balcony? That should show up by now. Yeah. Almost. Andrew goes into the back bedroom where Woodrow and Dan died, and also the closet where Rosalie's been known to hang out. He sits down and he's filming, and we end up getting a woman screaming. Now here's a few things to remember. Number one, none of us on the camera react to this, which means we did not hear it when it happened. Number two, if this was a voice from somebody that was outside, the downstairs camera, the static camera on the first floor would have also picked it up. That static camera was on the same side of the house near a window just like the one on the second floor. There is no reason in the world why that camera would not have captured a noise if it was outside, but it didn't. Which proves to me that whatever this was that was screaming was not coming from outside the building. The next part that's interesting is shortly after that scream, we caught what sounded like two little girls talking. Is Hazel? Is Hazel? Keep in mind again, it is after midnight in this small little town. It's probably less than 20 degrees outside at the moment. So the odds of a kid being outside playing is very small. The camera downstairs didn't catch anything. We didn't hear anything and didn't react to anything, but there it is on the camera. So is that Rosalie? Is it Hazel? Is it both of them? I can't make out what they're saying, so your guess is as good as mine. Is Hazel still up here? Can I speak with her, please? No. Man's voice just said no. I can't talk to her. Why can't I talk to Hazel? Who's Hazel? Yeah. Who's the... I believe. Is that Hazel? Yeah. Yeah. Is that Hazel? Yeah. Yeah. Is that Hazel? Yeah. Yeah. Something here to look out for. Yeah. What do we need to look out for? Uh, as, soon as, they, as soon as he's walking, the voice just said hello, too. Hello. Hi. Did you hear that? How are you doing? I heard I'm good. Do you have a name? What's your name? I think it's just fuck you. Fuck you is not a name. So at the end of the night, we decided that we were going to try a few different Estes sessions, one on each floor of the building. The Estes method basically puts someone with headphones on that are noise canceling and a blindfold on so they cannot see or hear the people who are asking the questions. Now they're listening to a spirit box over the headphones. Now the reason you do that is so you can get preconceived notions when you ask the questions. So if I ask, what color sh uh, shirt is Scott wearing? And Scott says, yellow. Okay, well, to him, yellow means nothing. But to us, that means everything. So the setup we had for Scott was we put him in the second story bedroom where Rosalie is known to hide. Myself and Andrew were sitting out in the room asking the questions. All right, I'm starting. Okay. That's strange. Is there anybody 
in the room with Scott right now. Please wait. <clears throat> Who are we waiting for? Eileen. Who's that? Eileen, are you out in the hall? You can feel it. Feel what? Oh, there could have been my wife. I'm home. home. Oh my god. Oh. So in the doorway, we had a music box with a motion sensor light. So if something passes through that, that light will cause the music box to play music. Do you catch that? Yeah. Dude, it got cold in here. Yeah. Get out. Who? Is there someone else? I'm there? dead. Is there someone else in there with you? His doctor. We could be talking to the one owner who needed the heart. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the wife and the husband. Free. Because that was the, the guy who got everything done. Yeah. That's what I was. Thinking Did you about. have a problem with your heart? Optical? Optical. Oh gosh. This has just got really, really. I'm getting difficult. lots and lots of music. A lot of interference. Well, are you standing in the door right now? Welcome. Come on in. Don't be shy. Is there anything you want to tell us? Well, I guess first off, I'm Rex. This is Andrew. The gentleman in there is Scott. What's your name? In the here and now. In the here and now. Hello. That thing is right. clicking off and on. Can you hear us? It's good to sit. Yeah. You did. Five. Do you want to come in here and sit with us? Yeah, come sit with us. Come on. You don't have to worry about that noise. If you, and then it cut out. You can come in here and sit with us. Don't let the noise scare you. It's just a music box. It's to let us know that you're coming in that way. We can talk. You should go ahead and leave it. The music box? Do you want us to leave it? Do you like playing with the music box? Don't be scared. You can run up and touch it. That, that was my jacket dragon. Right? <laughs> Lights. Yeah. Have as much fun with that as you want. Light, it's big, it's there. Mm -hmm. I'm Turn the camera over here real quick, just so they can see that it wasn't like me moving. Oh. Well, no, yeah, no, Rex is right next to me the entire time. It feels like there's somebody pacing and back and forth in front of me. It feels like there's like a light on me, mm -hmm. and like someone keeps crossing in front of it, back and forth. It's weird. Okay. Are you walking in and out of the room? Are you nervous about something? Nope. Great. Do you think you could please give us your name? That way we know who we're talking to. Please, also, feel free, if you have any questions, I'm going to say, feel free to ask us questions, too. I'm an open book. I'm sure. <laughs> There's a light in the middle of the doorway. If you want to go over and play with that, all you have to do is push it just a little bit, and it'll light up. Really? Really. Like a really sarcastic question, like, really? I don't think we're talking to a kid. No. Are we talking to one of the previous owners? Dan, yeah. Hello. <laughs> That's terrible. Did you not like that I scooted back? Something just touched my hair. That's weird. Huh. I really, really hope it's not a spider. I'm going to flip a dick if it's a spider. <laughs> Did you just touch Scott's hair? Are you in the room with Scott right now? House. We still never got a name. That's probably accurate. We're going to be pulling Scott out here in a minute. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Toys. Toys. Did you like the toys I brought you? Ball. Yes, I did bring you Spirit ball. ball. You, I did. Do you want to touch it? It's right in the Scott. middle. Scott. Female voice. Scott doesn't have the spirit ball. The ball's in the middle of the door. The it's a test. That's it. Oh, that's creepy. A voice just goes, die, 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 die. Well, that's not something you hear on the mm. video. No. 
We're here to help you. It's residual. It's mocking us. Die, 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 die. Yep, I'm getting chills. Yeah. Yep. It's residual. It's residual. We're friendly. Are you mocking us? You are mocking. You are mocking us. Are you the bad spirit that everyone's been talking about? Go fuck off. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought you were from the basement. What are you doing up here? Yeah, you. Yeah, I know you're talking to me. Serves you right. Why don't you go back down to the basement? Tell him to stop. So there came a turning point in during my Estes session where it seemed like the answers we were getting started to have a really dark turn. And it got to the point where Andrew even felt it necessary to ask the question, like, if you are the dark spirit in the basement, what the hell are you doing up here on the second floor? This isn't where you belong. And it seemed like whatever might have been down there that was reacting to us earlier is starting to follow us in our other parts of investigation throughout the building. The people up here are good people. Why are you disturbing them? Are you the reason that all the kids go and run and hide? Chicken. <laughs> Me? A chicken? Sounds like you're the scared one. Hey. I'm not wrong. Yes. I don't think I am. Stay. <clears throat> Who do you want to stay? You have anything else you want to tell us before I pull Scott out? It's your last chance. Do you want me and Andrew to do the Estes method? Do you want to talk to someone else? There it is again. Be scared. Are you scared? Not likely. What's up? We're going to... Okay. Alright, that's the session downstairs. Alright, let us know when you're ready. Let's see if you can hear us. Alright, we're good. So we're let's just <laughs> shut up. Oh! Someone told you to shut up. Or are you telling me to shut up? The battery's now completely dead on this. Like, okay. How much time is left on it when you turn it on the force? It was like at half battery. It's all the way drained now. Holy crap. All right, well, don't worry about filling. Again? Down. You're, I guess you're welcome for killing my battery? What's your name? Scissors? Hospital? Is there someone in the hospital? Third floor? What about the third die. floor? Huh, third floor die. We're getting told to die a lot tonight, aren't we? Again. Who do you want to die in the third floor again? Bitch. Who's a bitch? You're safe. Here. We're safe? Or are you talking? Right here. Right here? Well, that's good. Why are we safe here? What happens if we go back to the third floor? Who is it you're mad at? Harry? What did Harry... Anger. Anger? So what's making you angry? I'm dead. Is that why you're angry? I'm sorry that makes you angry. Blood splatter. What made the blood splatter? Was it the scissors? Did you do it to yourself? Reese? Did you make the blood splatter? There was like a voice over top of what like I was hearing. It was like a like a deeper voice, but I couldn't make out what it was saying. Did something happen Maybe. here after the funeral home was I got them. You got them? Who'd you get? Hard. Was it that bitch you're telling us about? I keep getting seven. 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 Like, different voices saying it. Okay, so there's something important about seven, then. Seven... Just keep... seven. 
Just seven? Like seven people? Seven people you got even with? Did seven people pass away in this house? Are they four? That's a big number if that's the case. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's up? Not a whole lot. We're trying to figure out who we're talking Hello. to. Hello. Hola. <laughs> Hola, senor. Como estas? Me llamo Rex. Who are you? I'm Scott. That's nuts. <laughs> What's what's nuts about me being Scott? Was it nuts that I agreed to myself in no. Spanish? Not again. Oops. There's too many. Sitting on the furniture. Would you like us to sit on the floor? No. Can you see us right now? They're here. Yes, we are. Cousins? Cousins? Jacob Evans. I don't have any cousins by those names. That baby? That's my cousin's name. You're Jacob Evans? Yes, and he's having a baby. Oh, wow. What about Jacob Evans? Maybe that's who's in the hospital. Maybe the baby's coming. Medic? Wait. Is something going on with Jacob's baby? Remember, keep your voice low so we can't hear you. Oh, yeah. Thanksgiving? Tell me about Thanksgiving. A mess? What was a mess about Thanksgiving? Again? Is Thanksgiving gonna go like last Christmas? Have you ever met Rex before? Just now. Just now? Do you like him? It's active. What's active? Evans. What about Evans? Blind? Me. We had sex? Pretty sure we didn't. He cut? He cut it out? What did he cut out? I don't want to know. I don't want to know what he cut out. Of me? Do you have an abortion? Stomach? We got stomach upstairs too. Did you have an abortion? The man? Did the man force you to have an abortion? Who, tell me about, tell me about yourself. Who are you? It was just once. Well, once is enough, I'm sure. Says he's Rex. Hey, there you go. Finally getting mentioned. Andrew? Hey, you got Scott. It. Yeah, we all three. Hi. Hello. Who are you? You got all three of us. We listen? Yeah. It's, it's time. Ow. Time for what? Time for us. We know. Do you want me to pull Andrew out of there? Are you done talking to him? We're spirits now. It's time. This mm -hmm. is all stuff she's heard. And if she is an older Gage. woman, she could have like dementia and stuff. Yeah. So she's just kind of. But you also think about it, he had, the way he's been saying this is like, he's speaking it like he's got anxiety. Yeah. So that tells me whoever is channeling through him right mm -hmm. now has a lot of anxiety. Like, they are really worried. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring Andrew out, is that okay? He's good. He's good? Okay. Lastly, for our last Estes session, we decided to go ahead and go down to the basement one last time. Um, considering whatever was down there doesn't like me, it was not reacting very well to me. Rex decided that he wanted to try to be the one to communicate with whatever was down there. Whenever you're ready. So the first thing I want to know, I want to know about the people who were saying this entire time, help me, help me. Who are you and what do you need help with? 
the one. Of course, we're gonna start with that. With that. So is one. it the one who needs help? Is she the one that's keeping you here? Where is he? Over here. Ooh. Over where? Bye. 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 Are you the one? We should buy like next to. I just got a really gargly voice I couldn't make out. What is your name? Me. Mm -hmm. Yes, you. Me, me. I see. You see it? What do you see? Here. Do you see us? I'm hearing like people like softly screaming you're fucked why are people so scared of you them what makes you so scared me i really don't think he's here do you enjoy scaring people and i'm not trying to say this because i'm trying to act like i'm like this huge brave guy but as someone who's worked in the mental health field for as long as I have, I've worked with at-risk youth, I've worked with sex offenders, I've worked with domestic violence offenders, I've had to interview murderers before. There's not really a whole lot that someone's going to say to me that is really going to rattle me very badly. And the sense I was getting from whatever was down there is if this thing was truly evil and it wanted to do some damage, there's nothing to stop it from actually doing that. If it was demonic, a demonic haunting is going to try to pretend to be your friend. Because the ultimate goal is it wants to possess you. Do you want people to be scared of you? He's first. Who's first? You're fucked. Die. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Who's Why? fucked? I'll come for his cousin. Who's? His. Give me a name. What do you hope to achieve? The one. What do you hope to achieve by being so mean to people? I'm getting that voice I heard earlier, the really like raspy one, it's whispering. Is it like, oh, I guess you can't hear this. What is your goal of trying to scare people? What is it you really want? Gone. You want us gone? Gone. You know, you're just trying asking nicely for us to leave. Because if you want us to leave, you know we'll, that. If you want us to leave, if you ask nicely, we will pack up and we'll go right now. We are not here to bother anybody. We're not here to give anybody our time. You don't have to be me. You just gotta ask. Go. Can you say please leave us? Bye. Okay. Alright. I'm a man of my word. Yeah. Go. Bye. So I told him, rather than threaten to kill anybody, yeah. if you really want us to leave, all you gotta do is ask. Mm -hmm. And then that's when he said go bye. Yeah. Go. So we're gonna respect his wishes. So the second owner, Carl Guani had received the building in the 1940s and he owned it all the way up to the 1970s. Carl is the supposed entity that resides downstairs and who is not such a nice guy, which kind of leads credence to what I had said earlier. You know, if you're an asshole while you're alive, you're most likely gonna be an asshole when you pass on. So, personally, I think Carl's what's going on downstairs and what that negative energy is. The sense that I got from this thing during this Estes session is it's that old motif of the old man, get off my lawn, like yelling at you and shaking his cane in the air. You damn kids, get away from my property, get off my lawn. That's what I got as a sense of whatever's in this basement. Whatever is down there just doesn't like people and wants to be left the hell alone. So if I came back for another investigation, one thing I would definitely want to focus on is that second floor. I would want to focus on Rosalie and Hazel. Now, whether that means bringing like the music box and the cat balls and maybe like some other trigger objects for children like uh, I know the owner had mentioned boo bears were very successful up there. You know, bringing stuff to 
communicate with them and kind of figure out what's going on there. So my closing thoughts on Broadwell is with it being a building that's over 100 years old and it's changed ownership so many times, that lends to a lot of different energies and atmospheres created throughout the building. Now, all of those are coming together and kind of intermingling, so I think that's why it's such a unique haunt. You know, you have this negative energy that's there. You have these children who are upstairs, and then you have the countless emotions that were brought through when it was a funeral. You know, people come there to say goodbye to their loved ones. So you have that creating a heavy residual energy of negative emotion. So I just think that it's a melting pot. So I think, you know, we could go there again and it could be a completely different experience. Our goal for this investigation was threefold. And looking back at those three goals, I think this investigation was widely successful. We were able to record disembodied voices and a disembodied scream up on the second floor. In the basement, we got the spirit box hits, we got my name said, we got tons of threats, we had cat balls going off on the second floor on command. We had Estes sessions where we can't hear what the others are doing, but we're getting intelligent responses to questions that we're asking. All of that, in my personal opinion, proves that there is something here and that whatever it is, is intelligent. So two of the three goals we set out to do that night, we were successful in doing. But that also leaves the third one for why we have to come back. What is it that keeps these spirits in this location? Is it a choice? Is it a punishment? Is it they don't know they're dead? I don't have the answer to that question. And that is a mystery that is going to eat at me until I can come back and try to figure out what that answer is.